So here we are making some forecasts using our earned value calculations. This topic is all about trend analysis. So we know this is the plant, this was the plant value, this is the money we spent. We were planning to earn 100, we could only earn 70 and we spent $120. So this is the story of day one. We calculated the variances, we understand that yeah, we are doing very bad as far as cost performance index is concerned. We only earned 58 cents for our $1 spend because the cost performance index was 0.58. Now the question is, your contractor asks you from a project manager, tell me how much we are going to spend for this particular project. Now there are some terms need to be introduced. The initial plan was that we will spend $500 because it was a 5 day project and I said that we will spend $500. This 500 could also be seen as a final value of our plant value thing and it is also called budget at completion. So before we know that we failed on the day one, we were planning to finish everything in $500 and that was our budget at completion. But after knowing the reality, we need to tell what is going to be budget at completion now. And this is called estimate at completion. So we are figuring out what is our estimate at completion now. Now budget at completion was original baseline, original cost baseline. Estimate at completion is based on today. Now in a simple case you know that you have already spent something. So $120 is already gone. Actual cost and how much are you going to spend for the remaining work? And you can say estimate to complete. Now there could be a first case you, you realize that okay whatever estimate we did was useless. All the assumptions we made were useless and I can't use my previous estimate to figure out the trend for future estimate. I need to do it again. And that is like you do complete new bottom up estimate for the remaining work. And this becomes your new estimate at completion. So this is a one possible way of calculating estimate at completion where you do the new estimate for the remaining work. Now when should you do it? If you get the question in your PMP exam, you need to see is the question indicating that your current estimation process was really flawed. There were serious problems in it and you have a new learning. Why don't you make use of those new learnings? So you apply this particular approach and this is going to give you a more better estimate. Assuming if that's not the case, the second possible case, a different way of calculating estimated completion. That is actual cost is anyway going to be there. And your project manager say, you know, day one was a typical day. You know, whenever we start a project, day one is always confusing. I have renegotiated rate with the guy and now guy is familiar with everything. First day he had so many issues related to, related to finding the office itself. Now he know everything. From tomorrow onwards, he is going to go on time and going to finish 10 machines every day and we are going to pay him $100 per day only. So the project manager is saying just take care of the today's variance which we have occurred but for the remaining work we will do as per our original estimates. So this is a case where we are saying the actual cost is actual cost but the remaining work will be done as per our estimate. So what is remaining work? Now you may say okay remaining work. In this particular example, we had to install 50 machines, we are done with 7, 43 machines need to be installed, that's the remaining work. But in earned value terms, there is no quantity, there is only money. So you need to tell what is remaining work in the form of monetary value. Ah, So it's like how much amount of work or how much money worth work is left. And in a simple case, it is the budget at completion minus earned value. You can think of in case of our project actual cost was say 120 and remaining work is 500 minus 70. So 430. You can simply think of also that 43 machines left 
and our budgeted rate for per machine was ten dollar so if we are going to spend ten dollar per machine so the remaining work left is four hundred thirty dollar so that's your remaining work so if you go with that that okay remaining work we will do as per budgeted plan but current just take care of it we can't leave we can't do anything about it we can't absorb this variance okay so if you go with that case in this particular calculation your estimated completion becomes 550 dollar so if you look at this 550 dollar from a detail point of view a little bit more focused on day one we did a work of 70 dollar and we spent 120 dollar means we spent 50 dollar extra and now what I'm saying is just take care of this $50 extra, rest of the work I will do as per budget. And that's why my estimated completion became $550. So this is a situation when you, when you get a question which shows that today's problem is a special case scenario. It's not expected to occur again. And our estimate which was done before still makes good sense and we want to estimate our completion based on our previous estimates only the second way of doing it third case and i would say the default case most of the time if situations are not given very clearly you apply this particular case and the third case is saying yes we learned whatever happened today is going to happen every day this guy is going to cost us $120. He is not agreed to do it in $100. And we can't expect more than seven machines per day. This is a reality we have to live with. So it's like the current variances are going to be continued. And if they are going to be continued, we need to calculate estimated completion, factoring the cost performance index. So you can look at this is that my estimate at completion is actual cost which I have already paid and for remaining work I need to factor this with my cost performance index. Now what is remaining work? Again actual cost plus budget at completion minus earned value divided by cost performance index. So this formula is taking care of the trend of cost performance index throughout the project duration. Now this formula can be simplified further. Now look at this calculation bit more in, in, in focus. So actual cost, I am just breaking this further. Budgeted completion divided by cost performance index minus earned value divided by cost performance index. I'm just simplifying the formula. Does it make sense? It's simply like I broke this budgeted completion divided by CPA minus earned value divided by cost performance index. Just to show that. Now, what is this? Let's see how it can be further simplified. Budget at completion divided by cost performance index minus earned value. Now, what is cost performance index? Cost performance index means earned value divided by actual cost. So if I say this is also earned value divided by actual cost, it means they get disconnected, actual cost comes here and this and this can get removed and we can simply work with a formula called budget at completion divided by cost performance index. Simple. In a simple way, it is like whatever budget we had, we need to factor the cost performance index. We need to assume that we are going to get only 58 cents from each dollar. So if I have to, I have planned spending $500, but now I am only getting 58 cents worth from each dollar, I need to factor this $500 and calculate something new. And what is that new? It's like 500 divided by 0.58, which makes me 862. So if I go with this formula, I find out that estimated completion, if I keep earning 58 cents out of my $1 plant originally, it's going to cost me $862. That becomes my estimate at completion. Now when do you apply this particular formula? When you see in your question that these variances are going to stay, 
they are not dying out. This is something, a reality, and you need to better factor this into it. There is a fourth way of looking at it, which is usually not popular and not elaborated much in PIMBOK as well, but for the sake of completing the theory, let's look at it. So it says that sometime you also need to use the formula like 3, but not only giving a importance to cost performance index, but also give an importance to schedule performance index. It says, why only divide from CPI? Why don't, why don't you include a schedule performance index as well? Now, this is a rare, rare uh, appearance. And uh, there are factors like how much weightage you want to give to a cost performance index, how much weightage you want to give a schedule performance index in order to calculate how much the remaining work is going to to cost. The schedule performance index is not that much good indicator because it has its own flaw. As you understand more about it, you will realize that. So for this particular time, you can just think of that. Yes, there is a formula, but it is it is very, very rarely used and rarely asked in PMP exam. So there are four ways for calculating estimate at completion. Now I also want to introduce something called variance at completion. This is like variance at the end and it is simple budget at completion minus estimate at completion this is like your contractor asking all in all tell me how much money are you going to ask for more something like this how, where are we as per our end state so if you are going with the second option the variance as completion in your case would be 500 minus 550 it will be minus 50 if you are going with another case, it will be something different. It is more like calculation of a variance at towards the end of, of this particular thing. So, like a lot of mathematics I did in this particular video. And at a, at a first view, it may look a little bit confusing. But once you go through this content two, three times and also practice questions related to calculation of earned uh, estimated completion, these things are expected to become simpler. So don't get uh, like worried about so many mathematics coming in. The PMP exam is not an exam of your mathematical skills. It's an exam of your project management skills. How do you interpret the situation in a project management context? So the, the memorizing formula could be a good idea just to do a mathematics well, but it won't result into right answer if you don't understand the context behind the question. So do understand when to apply which particular formula. Do understand the significance of these calculations and how, how the earned value and variances impacts your cost controlling and cost variances and cost forecast. That part is more important than just memorizing the formula. We have enough practice questions to make sure that you get these formulas well.